Howdy folks and welcome to 50 Nautical Mile Arc. Today we're going to take the Beaver Pier Floats version and I'm going to attempt my first water landing in this aircraft. I fly this thing quite often with regular tires and um, Tundra tires, but I've never done a water landing in this thing. And the reason why I'm taking a video of my very first time while practicing is it'll keep me honest because this I hear is quite difficult in real life as well as the sim. The sim is supposed to be completely accurate. The whole point being you come down steep, you flatten out just above the water, and you try to touch down at stall speed, um, descending less than 100 feet per minute. If you don't, you'll bounce, but you'll be bouncing below stall speed. So then you'll just crash and probably flip forward and roll in the water, tumble in the water. I don't know. We may find out if I don't do this right. Hopefully we won't find out. Um, so where are we going to do this? We're going to do this in Duluth, Minnesota, Sky Harbor Airport. And this is actually the plane I flew in with Pier Floats when I did a sky tour of Duluth, Minnesota. And I was at this airport in this aircraft, right at this dock. Um, we're not going to recreate that flight. It's a 20-minute flight, and I just want to practice landing. But we're at Sky Harbor. This is a park point behind us. That's Duluth in the distance. There's radio towers are by Central High School in Duluth. Um, that hill is 800 feet high, so it's kind of interesting because when you fly around, you're actually in Class D airspace for Duluth International, but if you stay below the hill, if you're um, 800 feet above ground level or lower, you don't have to worry about talking to the radio. At least that's what this pilot told me when I asked him about it. Um, we're not going to worry about that too much, but it's just something interesting. Something I do find funny about this aircraft is when you have pre-flight elements on, you have anchors in the water. I'll show you what I mean here if you look down. We have anchors in the water. I don't know if they'd really be there. Um, the pilot that we were with just tied it up to the dock with a little rope, just like a boat. So anyway, a um, couple things to know though, if you're not familiar with this aircraft. Um, aircraft docking. I can move this thing with my joystick forward and backwards and turn it into the side. And that's very important because if you take aircraft docking off, you're just going to float around. See that? You have no control and you're just going to float around while you're trying to get things set up. That is not on by default, by the way. So the first thing you do when you load the sim is turn on aircraft docking and put your aircraft where you want it. All right, so that's one thing to know. Um, otherwise, I think we're pretty much good to go. Let me put away the pre-flight elements. The rest we'll do from inside. You should be able to close doors and things from here. There we go, which one is it? All right, so now, we'll turn on, well, we'll keep the docking on until we get started. All right, how do we start the beaver? Pretty simple stuff. Well, this is interesting. In the um, regular version, fuel selector is always off. Um, the narrow side is where you're selecting, so we're selecting front. All right, what do we do? What do we do? What do we do? I haven't done this in a while. I've been doing other aircraft. Let me turn those on. Pytahi, fuel boost, don't need that. Put that up all the way. Turn this up a little ways. Come down here. Prime. Come back over here. Pump this thing up. I'll tell you what I'm pumping up in a second. Pump that up until this gauge goes to the green. I believe you can see it here. Here, here. Where did my close up go? My gauges. Oh, well, whatever. Hmm, there we go. I'm going to need that later, so it's worth it to find it. All right, uh, start this thing. Start, 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 start. Here we go. That was the longest that's taken me to start. Not having a very good day here. All right, so what I'm going to do is I believe your rudders have to be down when you taxi. 
I think. I remember reading about this, and it seemed backwards from what I thought it should be. Um, I guess we'll find out. So take up docking, and we're gonna get blown everywhere, so you gotta get ready to go here. Uh, anchor, there we go. I think we want that down when we taxi. We'll find out here. So flaps going for takeoff. There we go. Yep, you need rudders down to taxi, otherwise you don't you have no any control. And I believe we'll just lift off once we get our speed here. There we go. Come down here, pull rudders up right away. And yeah, that's right. Okay, get that going. Alright. We are flying wherever it wants us to go. real runway for that airport, the water strip is 90 and 120, or 90 and 270. Alright. I'm not going to climb very high, I'll bring the other flaps already. I'm going to do a quick little circuit. Back up the airport. The tie down ropes. Tie on an anchor or something. Tie onto a dock. Right. This airport is only about 611 or 631 feet off the ground. So we don't want to get too high. Good moving class B airspace. Which we already are, I guess, because we're. So, Booth International would be in front of us, but we're not going to go there. Um, let's fly around Park Point a little bit. I don't know, come in for water landing, very first attempt at a water landing. Now, I'm going to keep the rudders up to land, but then I would put them down to taxi. Even though they're down when you take off, I guess. Show what I'm talking about. Type of the rudders in the back. Wow, that's a nice looking aircraft. Just like you would expect, right? There's the airport back there. There's Wisconsin, that break right above the tail there. That's Wisconsin in the distance and Minnesota in the foreground. That airfield there you see on the mainland is Lou Superior. I mean, Superior. KSUW. I modeled that one. Um, International was over there behind the airplane. The lift bridge is not modeled in this. Uh, there is no custom scenery for Duluth that I know of. Somebody should do that. Duluth is a huge tourist area and it's very, very, very beautiful. And if I had any custom scenery skills other than airports, I would be making scenery for this. Downtown is in the right place, though. There's downtown, that's where it should be. It looks like downtown here, too. Um, you can't tell you're on a, going over a hill in the air, but there's an 800 foot hill there. Railroad yards are modeled, it looks like. If this is real life, you would have a dozen or so ocean liners and Great Lakes ships here docked right now. Alright, let's um let's go down here and land. Alright. Watch off the hot air balloon. Not that anything would happen, but Somewhat realistic. When we did our sky tour, the pilot um, just landed anywhere he wanted. I asked him about if you're supposed to land with the runaway is. He's like, whatever, just land. They just need water space dictated to be official, but I don't really think he. I think he's making it up. Because he just 
landed perpendicular to the airport, right in a little bay you see up here. We came across just over the beach, everyone was waving and we landed, just plunk right here, right there. Pretty rough landing too, to be honest. Alright, we'll um, see how this goes here. So landing flaps out. We'll just land next to the main runway, I'm not going to try to land next to the dock or anything. Take off, landing. Alright. Oops. Let's see, just above stall speed. And we have to keep our vertical speed indicator in view because we need to try to land 100 feet or less per minute. Alright, let's see what happens. Hard thing about landing on water is you don't know how high above the water you are, just like real life. You just kind of come in easy. Come in easy here. Get some rudder that we get blown all over the place. Just about at that water. Let's see here. how high above the water you are just in real life. So what you need to do in real life is you would keep your eyes on the landscape, on the shoreline, and use that as your gauge. But in a sim, your peripheral vision is cut off, so I really can't look at anything. So yeah, so when we did this flight, we came right across here only about 50 feet above the ground and landed right on this bay. Like I said, it's kind of like a dunk. Kind of a dunk landing. One more time. Let's see my inner speed here. I'm going to level off. Not that much. I'm going to level off. So, I think we got it. I think we got it. Got it. Did it. I'm pretty sure we did it. Alright. Let's taxi up and... That's taxi, and, you know, taxi back, and we'll take a look at that replay. And use amphibious docking to tighten it up a little bit. No brakes, of course, so you kind of have to be at the mercy of this. This here would be the ramp if you're going to come out and pretty good. No brakes, so let's see. Anchor down, I guess. There we go. Anchor down, we'll come out here, we'll do our amphibious docking. And we'll move it back a little bit. Yep. 
There we go. Keep that on. Hop inside. We'll actually look at the replay before we turn out the aircraft or else you have to redo it all. So, see, rudders weren't down when we landed. They're just down because they're down where the plane is parked. Let me see if I can change that. See, this is what I was talking about where things change. Oh, okay, so 2210, hang on. See, and Amphibious docking got turned off. See, that's what happens when you come in out of replay, is it changes things. So, see, now they're up, see? Anyway. Did I bounce? I did bounce. All right, let's have a look at that again. Let's, let's see. Oh, I didn't, did I? All right. Whoops, that's half speed. There's regular speed. No, I'm, I can't tell if I bounced or not. Actually, because we didn't get awake until the front went in the water. So let's see here. Maybe. Maybe we bounced a little. We didn't flip. That's the, that's the big thing. We didn't flip. So that's that one. Let's go back and find the other one. So here's the first attempt. I realize now I never touched the water. I was never in the water the first time. So again, that's really realistic because um, in real life you can't you hardly tell either. And then I went around. So I guess that means my very first landing with pure floats was a success. I kind of found a loophole there, it's the fact that I didn't actually land the first time, I thought I was bouncing, I was never even on the water. Um, I guess my first point of contact with the water, I did okay. Alright, let's get back to real time and see how the replay messed up everything. Let's see? Oh, see, look at that. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, see, so that's the problem um, with the replay, folks, is I was all anchored up, and everything was ready to go, but when I did the replay, it takes turns all that stuff off, and apparently it crashed while we are doing replay. Well, I guess that'll be that. Um, if you enjoyed the video, including the little nuances of a replay, go ahead and subscribe. And um, yeah, we will do this again very soon.